So I'm really excited about today's guest because Vena and I just met each other mm, a couple months ago at the Tom Ferry event. I got to hear her talk and what she has done in a short period of time is absolutely incredible. She has grown her business in a, in a different way. Just some introductions real quick. Uh, I'm Mark Choi, founder of High Note. This is Randy. Introduce yourself real quick, Matt. Uh, Randy Toby, I run growth at High Note. Awesome, awesome. First of all, how you got started, right? And then how you're utilizing and how you've used TikTok to grow your audience, to grow your brand. I mean, at this point, you have like 650,000 followers on TikTok, and that's where a lot of your business is coming from. And you haven't been doing it that long, which is like absolutely incredible. So why don't you share your story, like how you got into it, how you've got from where you started to where you are today? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, High Note, for having me on. Ever since I met you guys, I've been really excited about working with you and just chatting and networking. So I started I started real estate when I was 18. I became a realtor three years ago. I'm 21 now. I joined dad's company. I learned how to prospect for a solid year. I was just hitting phones and open house, very organic prospecting. And through that grit, I sold a bunch of houses. I sold like 15 houses my first year. I made a hundred grand. And so at the end of that first year is when I started posting on TikTok. I was already posting on Instagram and such, not like for my real estate business, but that wasn't going anywhere fast. So I got on TikTok and I started sharing my journey about how I got into real estate and what I'm doing for people here in Seattle. And that gained a lot of traction from my generation because to hear someone who dropped out of college, went to the entrepreneur route and found success, it was pretty inspiring to people. And I, I still get messages all the time about people get into real estate because they're inspired by me. So that's pretty cool. How old are you when you did this? I started, I got my license when I was 18. And so oh. I started making TikToks when I was like 19. Oh my gosh. Hey, I've never heard anyone get a license that young before. It's happening a lot more. The average age of the realtor is still pretty high as we know, but I mean, there are tons of young realtors coming to the game, especially like in the big cities, Seattle, LA, Texas, we're seeing a lot younger people show up to all these events and getting into the game, especially okay, I think with, well, yeah, well, with real estate tech like yours too, younger people are becoming more enabled to like understand this and utilize it in their business and kind of get an edge in their market um, with so social media too, obviously over, you know, veterans who have been in it forever. It's one of those industries that if you take it seriously, you know, and I'm, I'm not knocking college by any means, but it is one of those industries where, you know, you can get an education in under a year's time. Mm -hmm. I mean, to get licensed, it's what, like a week, week and a half, right? And then, the, and then the test, and I know the test is challenging, but it's an industry that if you spend a year doing it and really learning from the best, you could be making a hundred, 150,000, right? Depending on your price point. I know a lot of people that actually do that and go to school. You know, they want their education, their parents want them to have their education and, you know, all that stuff, but they're out there crushing it. So it's interesting to hear your perspective on that. So mm -hmm. no, literally compared to the cost and time of college, like a four-year degree, about tens of thousands a semester. And then you can just go, like you said, spend two weeks and get your real estate license. It's definitely a pretty good alternative route. And that's kind of where I've built a pretty big fan base over like Instead of going to college, you can go into real estate and build a business. I even talk about doing like off-market wholesaling. You don't even need a license for that. And I've made a bunch of money doing that too. There's a lot of avenues in real estate. And my whole brand is just kind of about showing Gen Z what they can do instead of going to college and how to set themselves up for the future. Because it's pretty unusual for young people like everyone else my age isn't really doing this and running a business and buying houses and trying to build up that wealth. How did you pick up your first set of buyers? You said you did 15 that first year. Uh huh. How did you get that first set? I mean, usually at that, at your age, you don't know a lot of buyers. You don't know. How did you get your leads? How did you mm -hmm. do this? First few, my first few sales were for sale by owner and expired cold calls for listings. Wow. Yeah. I Tom ferried the heck out of it, learned the scripts, pounded the phones every day. I was, I already had a couple people like in my network around my age who wanted to like get into this too. So I trained them while I was being trained and we were making the calls every day together, just being super, super consistent. 
And so that's kind of where how the business started for me. That's incredible. So ex explain we, your we're transition. all top Sherry fans. Yeah, for sure. Explain your transition from mm -hmm. that cold calling traditional model, right? Where you went from zero transactions to 15 units, 15 sides closed. Mm -hmm. Explain the transition, how you, how you went into TikTok, right? Or, or social media in general, and how you're now using that as your number one lead source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fun because I still do organic prospect and I built a team of 20 from TikTok who I teach how to organic prospect. And what happened was I was going to all these real estate summits, Tom Ferry, Mike Ferry, et cetera. And they're saying, you need to get on social media. You need to do video. So I started doing video and I just started being consistent with the videos too. Uh, I was doing like local market updates, how to buy a house, buyer, seller education. And then I was also doing the influencer, if you will, side to the brand where I'm showing young people how to get into real estate and why they should be buying houses because my generation doesn't know that they need to buy houses. Through TikTok, um, like I said, I built my team. That's probably the biggest thing that it's done for me besides bring me like direct buyer seller business is a bunch of people locally have like DM me, message me like, Hey, I love what you're doing. I want to go down the exact same path as you. Can I work for you? You know? So how I, big's your team? I've got 10 licensed agents and 10 unlicensed agents. And I don't work that hard on recruiting. Well, yeah, I guess your TikTok and give us an idea, give the audience an idea of your TikTok audience now. How many yeah. followers do you have now? I've got um, about 620,000 followers as of this morning on TikTok. Most viewed videos are about like house hacking strategy, how you can buy a house at a young age, rent up the other side, live for free. And then my journey and how I've made all this money. So I talk, I'm pretty transparent about how much I make on TikTok because I want people to know exactly what's possible and what that looks like. And then of course, like, I don't like to glamorize it either. I show like how much work this is, what exactly you need to do, what the steps are, because that's kind of a big thing is like, um, we see all these gurus online, but the biggest complaint that I've seen is like, they don't even show you how to get started, how to do it. They just want you to buy their course. So I'm pretty adamant about providing free content on TikTok and YouTube and just to spread that information. Now your content that you're creating, right. And, and, you know, being, being at the summit, you know, I saw so many people like they're trying to like manufacture content, mm -hmm. right? Like they're like, everybody posts the same thing. Like why yeah, rent? I think like, I know where you're buy, going. Right. Yeah. It's like this, like manufactured. Yes. Your content is more documentation. Mm -hmm. Like you're not, you're not really going down that like strategy, like mapping it all out. Do you just create this stuff on the fly? Uh, yes. So that's a really good point because that is what a lot of, I mean, we're in real estate space. So that's what a lot of realtors investors do is they post this generic content, like three things to know about buying a house, house tours, you know, all these house tours and stuff. It's like a kind of a big mistake, unless it's your own listing to just post house tours every day, because there's no personality in that. There's no brand. Anyone can do it. And there's no reason for that person to keep following along with you and your journey. You're not telling a story. You're just showing a house. What I've been pretty successful with on TikTok is speaking Gen Z's language, communicating with them in a way that they understand. So I follow a lot of TikTok trends. I speak really fast and engaging and excited about it as opposed to like boring content that no one really cares about. I really... Right take the time to think about what the problems my generation is facing. And a lot of times it's, they don't want to work forever. They don't want to be in the rat race. They want to figure out how to get into this real estate thing and get up into the top 1%. I have really built kind of around those topics. And that's how I've pretty built a pretty loyal fan base too. So you're saying don't do <laughs> what these other people are doing. Find your own voice. Like the just listed, just pending, just sold, taking a photo with the sellers, right? Mm -hmm. Like that same stuff that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. you, you think that that isn't working to their advantage. It's very generic and it's not really a reason. Like you're just hyping yourself up at that point. Rather, we would like to see how exactly did you help this person get their household? What did that process look like? What exactly did you do for the seller that they're so excited about? Tell me the story of what you did so that I can follow along and I can resonate with you and I can realize that you're a real person and you like to do good for our community.
want to keep getting tips, hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we hope you get a lot out of this.